Quantum TV is a doxer, a copyright strike abuser, he's wrote two of the most hateful tweets I've ever read, and has gone out of his way to call his critics family members, all while playing victim at the same time. Call themselves a commentary community, but really it's the harassment community. <laughs> <laughs> but you aren't dealing with the average commentary channel anymore. You're dealing with Teabag Nation. T-Tards rise up. Exposed. 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 You're exposed. You're exposed. Quantum's first problem is that his content is complete lunacy. He's a television reviewer who loves to start shit. He once claimed the guy was abusing his daughter because he once asked for her opinion on which TV she liked more. This is my Gadget World's original video. Alright, tell me which one do you like and why. Now, I thought it was an innocent enough video, but this is Quantum's retelling of it. We got this guy, My Gadget World, okay, basically bullying his daughter to give an opinion about a TV. The kid wants nothing to do with it. You don't believe me. Go listen at two minutes and three seconds when she goes, can I go now? <laughs> Yo, bro, how can that be your interpretation? Here's the best part. At that two minute, three second mark that Quantum points out, the girl asks if she can go and dad says yeah. All right, thank you. I appreciate your help. <laughs> That's it. I, I don't know how Quantum can interpret it the way he does. The, the kid has nothing to do with your review, guy. Fucking talk about the TV. Show the fucking TV. Be respectful of your family. Don't drag them into this shit. Bullshit reason you come up in your head with that it's okay to bring children of all things onto YouTube and fucking, you know, like, I could, I could just, I could slap you right now. I really could fucking slap the shit out of you right now for that. The worst part of this is that Quantum never shows the interaction between my gadget world and his daughter. So if you were to just watch Quantum's video, you would think that this guy's abusing his kid while reviewing televisions. Or if she, you, like, I can't even, I, I'm, can you hear I'm pissed? Like, this is bullshit, dude. Like, you don't treat children like that. Are you, like, what is the fucking TV game turning into? We got shills, and now we got motherfuckers out here with their kids, like, fucking treating them like shit. Like On a different occasion, Quantum TV decided to frame another television reviewer, Stop the FOMO, as a Satanist, all because he used the Netflix show Lucifer to show the differences in picture quality. The segment lasts less than 15 seconds and Stop the FOMO's 10 minute video. Yet Quantum wrote an entire blog post about how FOMO's a Satanist, ending it with, it's clear Stop the FOMO is a twisted individual who would sooner respond to those mentioning a Satanic cult than everyday viewers looking for assistance. If you're subscribed to him or be the the installer, I recommend unsubscribing. There are other fish in the sea. I'm not gonna lie, while researching this topic, Quantum's content has very much become a guilty pleasure of mine. It's literally a hub for the worst takes ever. And now we finally arrive to Quantum's infamous Elden Ring review. This is the video that started this whole saga. For the people who don't know, Elden Ring is the most critically acclaimed game of 2022. It has sold over 13 million copies in just a few months. And much like with Quantum's other content, most of his criticisms are completely crazy and invalid. Like when he says Elden Ring sucks because you can't fly a dragon in it. It's trash because it doesn't really introduce like mind-blowing mechanics that you've never seen before. Like, are you, are you swooping down on bosses after flying in from a dragon? No. Are you flamethrowing bosses with a dragon as a part of gameplay? No. He then says that Elden Ring fans should kill themselves for calling him an idiot. It's a challenge, and it has to be for players who think every game is fucking easy, and if you aren't one of those players, then you are a scumbag, you filthy casual. At the end of the day, go kill yourself, man. Now, I would think that this guy has to be a troll from how stupid he comes off, but he's not. He's a real person. We know this because he's actively filed copyright strikes against people criticizing him. In fact, it's come out that he's done this for over a year. With some people, like Ackman and Camelot, they simply appeal Quantum's claims and their videos stay up. On Mischief's channel, Quantum actually left a comment intimidating him into taking the video down, even though Quantum's just wrong in the video's fair use. And in at least one case, Quantum managed to keep a video down from Joel after appeal, resulting in his channel getting a strike. So this guy not only has shitty opinions, but he's also a complete menace to the YouTube community. This sparked outrage, and people started to dig through his past, resulting in an avalanche of skeletons to come pouring out of his closet, one of which might very well be the most homophobic, hateful tweet I've ever read. You have LGBT kissing in church, but we're bigots for rejecting this hateful content? What he's responding to is the two girls kissing scene from The Last of Us. I don't know what could be hateful about it, but this this next tweet from him is awful. He says, oh, why weren't you a pulse victim shaking my head? The world would be a better place without you. Hashtag 
boycott. Hashtag the LGBT of us. He then doubles down on this saying, they deserve it. The world would be better off without them forcing their lifestyle on it. Referring to the Pulse nightclub mass shooting. The best is this guy roasting him. People deserve to die for pushing their lifestyle. What the actual fuck is wrong with you? You're trying to push your weird ass TV calibrations as well. I tried them. They're garbage. I think you should die for that. <laughs> <laughs> now these tweets are from 2018 and have since been deleted. In fact, Quantum just uploaded a video defending himself from these old tweets. And his reasoning is as nonsensical as ever. It's called Quantum TV Drama Set Straight. One of the talking points they've been trying to cancel me with for the longest time is saying that I'm some homophobic, you guys, you know, the whole spiel that they push out. Let me, let me just kind of put this out there. It'd be very hard to be a vegan like I am and be homophobic. A vegan literally can't be homophobic. I, I don't understand. <laughs> Have you like tried and it just didn't work out or what? A vegan literally can't be homophobic. If I'm so homophobic, why would I support their businesses? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But they don't care about logic. They, they just want to lie. Logic, bro, that argument makes no sense. He's saying he's vegan, so he can't be homophobic because when he's hungry, he, he eats at vegan places and LGBT people tend to work at vegan places. This really clears up that whole pole shooting tweet. Just a couple months ago, he saw a video with 100 views and captioned it by saying, This is getting disgusting. These guys are making their sexual fantasies in thumbnail form. I'm not gay. Never will be. Guess this is how LGBT treats straight people now. Nobody is trying to turn you gay, bro. The LGBT community doesn't want you, even though clearly you suck a ton of cock. Much of this and more would be put into videos exposing Quantum, and his method of retaliation after his copyright strike attempts failed was to call the act man's mom crying about it. What a creepy, loser, low-life thing to do. Why bring it to a point where family is involved? It comes off as threatening. But in actuality, it wouldn't be the first time Quantum would take things too far when trying to get back at someone. Here's Quantum, full-on doxing ninjitian, showing his full name, phone number, and business, leading to tons of people calling and harassing him. It's like bots were set up to do it or something. The point is, shit stacks pretty high when it comes to Quantum. The guy is genuinely awful, which is made even more awful because at times it looks like you YouTube is protecting him. In back-to-back -back videos from the act man, he would call for Quantum's ban, with the second video titled The Dark Age of YouTube being struck down. But not by copyright. It was found in violation of YouTube's community guidelines for sex and nudity. The only sexual joke in the whole video was a cucumber that was like, put near Quantum's mouth? I don't know, demonetizing the video, sure, but to strike down the video entirely is completely unheard of. A more interesting case is Rich from Review Tech USA getting a strike for reacting to clips of Quantum. It was for harassment and cyberbullying. What, is Quantum above mockery? If YouTube's not gonna ban him, fine, I don't care, but to then say criticizing and clowning on him is strike worthy, it just doesn't make sense to me. This shit show would reach a boiling point when Ackman would go on Twitter and make a joke about doxing YouTube employees. I'm excited to announce my new series of videos I'll be making on YouTube called Doxing Adventures with Actman. In it, I'll be doxing and harassing the family members of YouTube employees and other content creators. It's sure to have a lot of family fun. Ha 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 ha. The point of this tweet being, since YouTube didn't ban Quantum for calling Actman's mom, Actman should be able to dox YouTube employees. YouTube responded to this by demonetizing his entire channel, meaning that Actman can't make money from YouTube anymore. Now, do I think Actman should have made this joke? No. Do I think his punishment should have been losing his entire monetization? over it? No, it's complete overkill for what is obviously a sarcastic joke. This led to the start of a movement. Hashtag justice for act man. It was viral on YouTube with tons of creators getting millions of views for talking about it, as well as trending on Twitter for a period. Well, it's been a few weeks now and everyone's pretty much moved on. The movement's over. That's my problem with movements like this. It tends to happen only once a year or so, but there's such a lack of focus on what changes they want to be made that they waste the moment. I want to talk about this, so hopefully when the next big movement comes around, we can actually get it right. On April 23rd, 2022, Actman posted a video titled Copyright Abuse on YouTube, featuring Quantum TV. The video had one main goal, to get Quantum banned from YouTube. And my end goal is the termination of his YouTube channel. Mark my words, Quantum, all roads lead to one destination, the termination of your current YouTube channel. And I will not rest until that is achieved. Listen very closely once more. 
I will get your YouTube channel deleted. I don't even think this is all that noble of a goal. It just turns into villainizing the guy so much where Eggman's just trying to throw the whole book at him, leading to a lot of misinformation going around. Here's the list of charges Quantum is apparently guilty of. Through my research, I am able to provide undeniable evidence that Quantum TV has violated the following community guidelines on multiple occasions. External links, hate speech, cyberbullying and harassment, additional policies, ban evasion, copyright, harmful or dangerous content, child safety, and spam, deceptive practices, and scams. Wow, this guy's guilty of everything. Now that the drama's settled, let's quickly go through and try and figure out why you two may or may not have taken action against him, as well as dispel some of the fake charges against Quantum. Ackman's arguments fall into three main categories. The first one being homophobic statements and YouTube not banning Quantum for it. The second is Quantum ban evading and YouTube letting his other accounts slide on the site when they shouldn't. And the third category is copyright abuse, which Quantum is 100% guilty of. The reason why YouTube hasn't banned Quantum for his homophobic speech is because his original tweets were deleted and now only exist in screenshot form. Eckman explains. While it's undeniable he broke YouTube's guidelines on hate speech and external links, uh, YouTube will not do anything about that because he deleted the evidence. And remember, if you delete things on the internet, it's like it never happened and everyone forgets. I understand Actman's frustrations here, but it's a good policy from YouTube for many reasons. Screenshots could be taken out of context, deleted because the person no longer agrees with it, or in the worst case scenario, completely fabricated. And as it turns out, this is most likely the case for one of Actman's main pieces of evidence against Quantum. Quantum TV is still the same person that believes these things. He still thinks the gays are out to get him and force him to have anal sex. I don't want to participate in the anal sex the liberal people tell me to. I mean, this is insane. Let me read this sentence again. I don't want to participate in the anal sex the liberal people tell me to. YouTube and advertisers don't want to be associated with that level of craziness. One minute someone could be watching Stop the FOMO and the next minute they start having anal sex with their dads. YouTube and advertisers don't want to be associated with that level of craziness. This is entirely from Actman's video and twice in it he shows a YouTube representative explaining the rules, showing that they're hypocrites for not banning Quantum for this. The problem with this screenshot is that it's probably fake and first appears on Reddit memeing Quantum. Nobody has an alternate screenshot of this post, and none of the moles in Quantum servers even remember seeing it. Even Ninjishin, the guy who was doxxed by Quantum, has been begging people to stop talking about this thing. Writing Rich, this isn't real. Don't post videos that can make Quantum look like a victim. And responding to Actman, this is a fake comment. Please don't focus too much on this. What are the things that you feel like people are getting wrong about the situation with Quantum? I'm talking about the Actman, Rich, myself, everybody. Um, one of the biggest ones is the discord post. Okay. The one that get, that's been passed around the one that's like a few paragraphs long that got posted, I guess, to OLED gaming or, you know, the long Satanist, atheist, liberal one that gets posted around and people are like, Oh, it's verified. It's not fake. No, it's fake. And I've said it, I've said it to rich. I've said it to everybody. Okay. It's fake. I know it's frustrating because we don't like Quantum, but this policy from YouTube protects a lot of creators from getting banned from fake posts like this. This is a good rule. The second biggest argument from Actman is that he's ban evading. It's a massive part of his video as he emphasizes it a lot. Our next order of business, ban evasion, as I believe this is where the conversation should have started and ended. We know Quantum is evading a previous ban because he admitted himself on multiple occasions back in 2018. But I asked the court if his channel wasn't banned, then all these posts from 2018 were faked, right? Problem with this argument is that Actman is just wrong. Quantum is not ban evading. Yes, those posts are real. Yes, his channel Quantum Apotheosis was banned at one point, but Quantum has since appealed his ban and won reinstating his channel, meaning he's not ban evading. We know this because in an old video shouting out Quantum's previously banned channel, there's a link in the description that directs to the same channel which has been rebranded to Next Gen Gamers. This proves that his channel has been reinstated and that he's not ban evading. Quantum pointed this out, which then led to Ackman making up a conspiracy theory, which is just so easy to disprove. Right now, Mr. TV has four active channels. Quantum TV Vlog, later renamed Controversial Truth, Chemical XJ9, his main one, and this brand new Next Gen Gamers. This channel is not brand new. It's been up since 2013 as videos of Quantum on it that are over four years old. I don't know why he's saying that. In terms of ban evasion, this is the only channel that matters because again, this is Quantum's originally banned channel that was reinstated and then renamed. Here's Actman's conspiracy against it. Your Honor, 
It's possible to change the custom URL of a YouTube channel quite easily. I suspect he found this video, changed the link of an old channel he had privated to match this one, and is trying to pass it off as if he was never terminated. This is a cute theory, but it's also really easy to disprove, so let's do it. With YouTube, every channel has two URLs. One unique URL, which you can't change, and one custom URL, which is usually set to the name of the channel. For instance, mine is Willie Mac Show. See, it goes right to my channel, and is displayed right there at the top. However, if we search for myself on Google and click my profile, we'll see a different URL displayed at the top. This is my unique URL that I cannot change. So if we just type in Quantum's channel, youtube.com slash nextgengamers, nothing should pop up because it's not his custom URL. Remember, Ackman says he changed it to this. But look, his channel does pop up, clearly labeled Next Gen Gamers, meaning that this is his one custom URL. So the only way that this other link could work is if it's his unique URL, which it is. Meaning, yes, this is Quantum's previously banned channel, which has since been unbanned, proving that he's not ban evading. This ban evading shit is complete misinformation and should have never been a point of contention. There's other claims that Actman makes that are just complete misinterpretations of the rules, one being that Quantum says he's a TV calibrator and he's breaking YouTube's rules on scam by selling his settings online. And he's been using YouTube memberships and Patreon to scam people into thinking they're buying TV settings from a certified calibrator. So this is basically what it's supposed to look like. What Quantum wants to do and sell people looks like that. <laughs> oh, God. So essentially he's, well, not essentially, he's literally lying, telling people that he's a, a certified calibrator when he's not. Yeah. So wow. that, that, well, he says he's a master calibrator, which is no such thing. YouTube, he's scamming people. He's using your website to scam people. Yes, quantum settings suck, but that's not what YouTube describes as a scam. In their TOS, they clearly define scams as content offering cash gifts, get rich quick schemes, or pyramid schemes, sending money without a tangible product in a pyramid structure. Overmarketing yourself as an expert when you're not or selling shitty products isn't against TOS. Otherwise, half the beauty community would be banned. My main issue with this whole thing is just the lack of focus and just how desperate it feels. Actman at certain points of this was just acting crazy. YouTube explains to Actman why they won't ban Quantum over screenshots of deleted tweets. It sucks cause Quantum's an ass, but the reasoning makes sense to me. Actman's response is to go to Twitter and post how YouTube's homophobic, oh sorry, looks homophobic, even though he's literally proving their point by spreading around a fake screenshot. Actman then makes up a conspiracy theory that Quantum is ban evading when he's not, it's provably untrue. When you spread misinformation on someone, even if they're a piece of shit, you turn them into a victim. Don't give Quantum that privilege. Actman then made a joke about doxing YouTube employees and harassing their families on Twitter, which he didn't delete until they asked him to, resulting in his monetization being taken away. So the movement has gone from fixing copyright abuse, to ban evasion, to YouTube's homophobic, to you should be able to joke about doxing YouTube employees. We're all over the place. The plot's been lost. Like it sucks you lost your monetization over this, that's wrong. But you wouldn't be able to make this joke when working at Walmart or GameStop. I don't know why you thought you could make it about YouTube. It's sort of like swearing at a cop. You should be able to do it, but if he writes you up a bullshit ticket, what did you expect? This conversation should have started and ended with YouTube's copyright system and implementing a way to punish people who abuse it or use it to intimidate others. Because Eggman does a great job of pointing out the problem. Copyright abuse. Over the years, YouTube has made great strides in favor of protecting fair use content. I and many others truly commend them. The platform is way better than it used to be four years ago. However, there still exists one major easily exploitable flaw in the system. YouTube will never punish you for breaking the law and submitting fraudulent takedowns. You don't enforce any punishment or repercussions. There is nothing to discourage people from doing it except the community rising up, pointing the finger and saying, that guy's a piece of shit. He's 100% right. The only way to discourage this kind of behavior is to bully people into stopping. Susie Liu stopped, but it took so many videos to get her to. It's complete overkill, but it's the only option we have, which eventually leads to YouTube striking down people like Review Tech USA for covering him, making it seem like YouTube supporting Quantum. Quantum at this point, I think has stopped copyright claiming people, or at least I haven't heard of any new cases, but there's always gonna be another Quantum. Again, they say abuse of this tool may lead to the termination of your channel and under penalty of perjury. So my question, 
What exactly constitutes abuse of this tool? Great question. This is exactly what the movement should have been focused on, getting YouTube to punish people who use their tools in this way. Instead, we got all caught up on the wrong things. I really think there's a conversation to be had there where progress can be made and we could help protect future content creators. It's a shame that was lost in all of this. I hope next time a movement comes around, we can keep that in focus. If I had any other criticisms for Actman, it would be that he was a complete obstacle for my research at times. On Augie RFC's stream, I asked him if he could send me his evidence. He told me no. If you could send me that, that would be cool. Because it's been hard to uh, hard to find I, um, outside of it. Well, there's a, a re-upload of my uh, Dark Age of YouTube video. Uh, at this point, I'm kind yeah, of done yeah. investigating shit and sending it to people. I feel like I've done enough of that. Uh, and fair. it's not, it's not good for my mental health. I was like, fair, I'm not the police. He doesn't owe me anything. I can respect that. But when I would go do my own research, he would seemingly get mad about it. Framing me as a quantum TV supporter. He'd write, why die on this hill defending quantum? Why is it so hard to say calling someone's family over internet beef is not a good thing to do? I would never defend quantum and I would never support someone calling another person's family over internet beef. That is a ridiculous thing to say about me. I responded, all I did on Augie's podcast was ask questions so I got direct answers from you. I still have to verify everything you said on Augie's podcast. It's basic research. It's not me willfully misunderstanding. This is a good thing for me to do. He then mocks me, quoting, I still have to verify it. LMAO, you already demonstrated your lack of research by not knowing these things. You're uninformed and simply being a contrarian for the sake of being a contrarian in the face of undeniable evidence. Undeniable evidence. Bro, you did get shit wrong. Yeah, I like you're above people verifying your work. It's like, you made up a whole fucking conspiracy about this guy, dude. That's on you. Don't be mad at me for checking your shit. You did the same thing to Tommy, framing him as a quantum TV supporter for what I thought was a fair statement, even going as far as trying to get YouTube to strike him over a meme involving J Station. He even DM Nick, oh boy, Tommy C's about to get a strike if I have anything to say about it. Bro, if you think you can make a joke about doxing and harassing YouTube employees' families, then Tommy can make an innocent joke about you. I'm glad you deleted the tweets though. And to quantum TV, TV. You go around and you're crying that people aren't hearing your side of the story. Well, bro, I've tried to reach out to you for the past two weeks. You've completely ignored my Discord messages and then banned me from your Discord server. You just sit there and cry in your Discord server while everyone pats you on the back. Either talk to somebody or shut the fuck up because this shit is pathetic. Hello, is this Ant-Man's mom? Who's calling? What up, bitch? So what is my final takeaway on this situation? Well, big viral movements like this only come around once a year or so, so it's important to know what you want from them. If it's just about shitting on a guy for being an asshole, that's fine. Go after him for anything and everything. But if you want tangible change, it's best to stay focused and to try and get that meeting with YouTube. Avoid making jokes about doxing and harassing YouTube employees' families, and don't call the whole company homophobic because one user with 60,000 subscribers tweeted some fucked up shit four years ago and then deleted it. That's not how you get a meeting. I also don't think Actman is a bad guy. I just think he's very emotionally invested and made some rookie mistakes when dealing with this situation. Tunnel vision being one of them. Hopefully he's learned from it. So thank you guys for watching. I hope I was able to add a little something to this discussion. And guess what? I'm back home. So that means there'll be more videos very, very soon. Thank you to Riveter, Aki Hanna, and Chris the Narc for helping with some of the research on this. You guys came in clutch. Shout out to the homies on Patreon. Phoebes, Crimson Glass, Zombie Fox, Riveter, Latchkey Goth Boy, Christina Vina, Detective Pika, Mac Monkey, Drain Kobex, Bo Blacks, Necrovac, Jack Mad and the mega homies Reynolds Hughes, Marissa Lynn, IGP, Hellison, Bald Boy Ajax, Jason Johnson, Your Taxi, Spartan McCowell, Free Spirit Katie, Lore Reloaded, Code 9, Papa Gut, and Run Ben. These are the people that allow me to make the videos I want to make without having to worry about YouTube's monetization system. I appreciate them so much. Thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter and until next time.